Pushing the button, it's a new week. Yay! Oh, Chad. Chad, Chad, Chad. <laughs> Start the show in the meantime. <laughs> Hi, Mrs. Ryan. <laughs> hello, hello. I do not have sharpened pencil. Let me turn some volume down. It's, it's so oh, it's Chad. So oh, no. <laughs> <There's> <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> there we go. Hello, everybody. Oh, man. Uh, this only could be used to sharpen. I know I'm pretty specific with liking a very freshly sharp each show, but. Uh. Yeah. Particular details. All right. Hi, Mrs. Ryan. Hi, everybody else. Welcome back. Today is, ah, let's see. Welcome back to the old late night playset. Today is Tuesday, October 15th, 2019. My name is Jay Ryan. This is Nicole Ryan. We are the Ryans. And uh, we've got a good show for you tonight. We've got great shows for you this week. We're calling it Friends Week. We're calling it Friends Week. I like it. Um, it's Friends Week. We've got uh, a friend of mine from high school and throughout life uh, here today, Alex Bloom. He's been on the show before. He's a producer. Are you a director, too? Because I know you used to direct stuff. Would you bill yourself that way, or are you a producer? Writer. Writer. <laughs> Duh, of course. Anyway, uh, he'll be out here in a few minutes to talk about his film, which we talked about last time he was here. It's recently been picked up on Netflix, so you, everybody can watch it anywhere, available it. all the time. Uh, watch it over and over and over, and then make sure you click the thumbs up thing to, you know, signify that you liked it and get all the, uh, I don't understand algorithms, but that's all the stuff that's Apparently necessary that's for the algorithms. Apparently that's what you do. Mm -hmm. uh, Mrs. Ryan, there's a lot of stuff here, none of which is too big and none of which is too difficult to tackle. I think we'll be able to handle it all. Um, for the hellos, let's talk about the weekend. How are you doing? How was the weekend for you? Uh, I am fine. The weekend was fantastic. The weekend was fantastic. Yeah. What happened? What did we do? Uh, Saturday was auto kennel, yeah. which I thought about because of my shirt. Yeah. Hi, guys. Breakfast club <laughs> on Friday, of course, uh, as, right. as usual. Can't remember if anything unusual happened that day or not. The Hulk was up there earlier in the week. That uh, was kind of fires interesting. Fires were that day. Oh, right. It was the day the fires broke out. So That's it was right. a little, the energy yeah. was a little LA's chaotic. on fire again, everybody. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I think mm, things are more under control now, but I know there definitely has been some some property loss and I think even some lives lost. So sorry for that. But but you're right. Breakfast Club was great. Above the fires. Uh, Auto Kennel on Saturday turned out to be quite the scene, man. Yeah. It was so much fun. We Magnus had, came by. <laughs> we often go. I mean, it, it's all people from the same little pocket. Magnus and Jeff Zwart was there and, uh, and, and Kevin Lynch came down. Yeah. Um, and, and obviously all the usual faces as well. But uh, it, it's become quite a little who's who cars and coffee down there. It's because Paul Kennel's got good cars. Everyone wants to check them out. Good job, Paul Kennel. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, it's such a nice day. You guys have really done such a nice job with it. The only thing I would say it was missing was the Ed. The Ed was not there. I think he was on vacation or something, oh. or, ju or just not working that day. But it, we it we missed you, the Ed. Energy without him. Mm -hmm, for sure. Uh, but great to see Jennifer Kramel. Kramel. <laughs> now it's Kramel. <laughs> Yeah, you heard me. I did. Uh, so there was that. Let's see. Um, a couple, not bad news. Well, whatever. Yeah. All right. A couple other losses. Uh, uh, one for me that is uh, not anybody I've ever met, but he was somebody I kind of, in a weird way, sort of hope to maybe work with in some way someday or meet someday or something. I don't really know. But Robert Forster. Uh, he, an actor for decades and decades. I probably found him in the in the '90s from Jackie Brown. He was in Jackie Brown. He is. He's great. In that. Uh, and of course, later, uh, more contemporarily speaking, uh, Breaking Bad. He was on Breaking Bad in the, at the very end there. And then right. m more recently, no spoilers, except I'm going to spoil a little bit. He's in the Breaking Bad movie that just came out, which came out like days before he died, or like the day before he died. Yeah, just one of those things. It was one of those things I didn't know. Was he the Chainsaw Massacre guy? Not that I know of, but, but it's never possible. Mind. Oh, wait, maybe. You mean in the original? Yeah. Holy smoke. Well, it, in what capacity? He might have been like the cop or something. I, thought I can't remember. I feel like I met him when they did the remake. That oh, I you worked on the remake yeah. in like 2001 or two-ish? A little the second remake. But oh, okay. A little bit <laughs> 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 but I thought I met him. Oh. Anyway, uh, one of those just people, he's a fantastic actor yeah. and had so much credibility in his face and his eyes. And uh, Robert Forster, I just... I love you, buddy. I don't even know why. I never met you, but great work. Sorry to see you go. Uh, although I think he was 
He was up there. Yeah. So, I mean, it's understandable. A uh, little less understandable is uh, a former guest on this program. Uh, when we were first starting this show, it was called Life with the Ryans. It was Mrs. Ryan and myself, and we had two microphones here at the dining room table, and I'm sure you recall that. Uh, we didn't know what the hell we were doing, and we called on a lot of friends who were kind of interesting or quirky or weird, like we found ourselves to be. And one of those people was a guy that I used to work with, a colleague named Jonathan Hirsch. He was an art department guy, did a little bit of everything, lighting and all sorts of stuff. But he was a, a, an entertainment industry guy who also happened to be, and this is why he was here on our program that day, um, he was an expert on medicinal cannabis and specifically the, 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 the chemistry of the things that, that people like you need and certain people with different things, Parkinson's he was studying and a bunch of other things. Right. Anyway... Um, Jonathan Hirsch passed away uh, last week and unexpectedly, and I don't think there's a big story. I think it's just one of those weird freak things that have been coming up an awful lot in, in, in life these days where people yeah. just, boop, disappeared. Check out. But uh, Jonathan Hirsch, we love you, buddy. Uh, I got a picture I'm going to put up right there. And, uh, and there you go. Lots and lots yeah, of love. Yeah, we that love you, pal. Best, best of luck on your journey out. wherever you're going, however that works. We don't know. But... Uh, we really appreciate you making time for us and being such a good friend to me over the years. Good guy. Damn good guy. So glad I, I got to it. meet you, bud. All right. On the nicer side of announcements, here's the exciting stuff. We have been down nonstop at Porsche Experience Center Los Angeles doing scouts and having meetings for our week there uh, for their third anniversary in November. No joke. It's the week of November 11th. That's when it starts. <laughs> it couldn't have made that up. Um, we're going to be doing shows there the Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. That's right. Breakfast Club will be at the PEC that particular week. And then we'll have the big uh, Porsche Experience Center Los Angeles anniversary blowout with the bands and the big hoopla and a big deal on Saturday the 16th. Lots so, of attendance, it seems like, too. It sounds like they're expecting a heck of a crowd, yeah. yeah. And, and I know our Los Angeles people are going to come out in droves anyway, so it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, but if you want to see our show and us and, uh, and, and the, the entire late night playset, we're going to bring all the stuff down to the Porsche Experience Center. Had our meeting yesterday with the art department, our yeah. production designer, and the set decorator there, and uh, it was just a lot of fun. Really cool to be... Uh, I don't know. Growing. <laughs> it's it's really cool to a very, see this go someplace. Very magical week, I think, down yeah. there. The guests are going to be great. Uh, no announcements on that yet for a lot of reasons, surprises, and we don't know what the hell we're doing. Um, but there are some big names already that we know will be there, uh, and certainly some surprises. We're going to be doing some tours around the building. You're going to get to know the PEC a lot better through us uh, and that week. So we're really excited about it. Stay yeah. tuned for that. And by all means, come on down because there will be a live audience available for all of those shows. Yeah, yeah. It'll, it'll be, be fun. fun to see everyone. It, like it'll top right gear there. style. Yeah, like in the we, gallery. Everyone can participate. We'll be in the gallery. It's be not present. That we're not going to be locked away in a conference room yeah. or, or you know somewhere else uh, like a production space. This is going to be live in front of everybody. So yeah, super cool. We have no idea what to expect. We don't don't know what to promise you, but we're going to do our best, and I think we're going to have a lot of fun. So usually that translates pretty well. Yeah. Mrs. Ryan, enough chatter, chatter. I've got a couple videos to play. We've okay. got East Coast Feed today, and we've got Orange Curtain. What would you like first? Mm, East Coast Feed. All right. <laughs> Let us take a look over here. Go all the way back east. Check in with Danbury <laughs> Chive, Brooke and the Casman, and I believe Uncle Mike. See where they are today. Roll it out. Mr. and Mrs. Ryan, East Coast Feed from the Ferris wheel. Look, we got Auntie oh. Chad, we got Coraline, and Brooke adventure. scared out of her mind. This is on a Ferris wheel. They're kind of high. But Coraline, are you, are you protecting Brooke? Because, yeah. you know, it's a problem. Joe, you be good? You like the Ferris wheel so far? So she's not talking as yeah. much, but anyway. Hang on, she said. Hang on, she said. Hold on. Um, we're just giving you some random East Coast Feed from Great Adventure in uh, Jersey. Say goodbye, everybody. Ah. <laughs> ah, that's the best. Look at that little face, man. Come on. Look at all those faces. That's incredible. Oh, God, Bye, I love everybody. Them. <laughs> and she's the only one out of the whole group that gets his trick. Everybody say, Bye, Jay. Bye, Jay. You know what I mean? It's great. Yeah. Little girl's got dad's sense of humor, and that's not a bad thing with that fellow. <laughs> Love you, Kaz, man. Love you, Brooke. Uh, Jasmine, nice to see you. First time I've seen her in a while. Yeah, so good to see you, buddy. And. This is where I get confused. It wasn't, oh no, it's Wonder Woman. She was wearing a Wonder Woman, right? It always looks like, I'm old, so it looks like WWF, which is what WWE was before WWE, and it used to have the logo that looked like that Wonder Woman logo. Yes, it did. Do you remember? <laughs> I do. It, it used to look just like that. <laughs> Nobody else can see it. Yeah. How about now? 
That you're right. It was totally confusing for a minute. Wonder Woman. Well, because kids, when I was a kid, there was like wrestling under roofs and stuff. That's that's why it's confusing me specifically. Okay. When yeah, I was a kid, was I could have had Hulk Hogan. I could have had that. You know. <laughs> Alex, too. You could have had the same thing growing up in the same area. Good to know. Right down the street from where all that WWF stuff happened in Stanford, Connecticut, of course. Oh, it's just right. a world I don't understand. <laughs> There's so much. I know. I can't believe it's all coming back. I can't believe – we had this conversation with Jeff Zward on Saturday. I can't believe all this stuff that was absolutely meaningless in my childhood and throughout my life is now the most significant and relevant stuff and all anyone else wants to know about me. You used to work for Bob Sharp? What was that like? Like, you used to be at Lime Rock with Paul Newman? What was that like? <laughs> I mean, we used to, we. When I say we, I mean everyone in our town used to race Paul Newman up Route Seven because the kids thought they had what it took, and they thought he was a Volkswagen Beetle, and it was actually a V8. So many stories. You have like some that. pretty incredible stories. It was awesome to watch you and Jeff just shoot the shit and just catch up on weird I stuff didn't, like that. Well, we're talking about Letterman and getting Letterman here, and I told him that we'd been making some progress, and he, he of course, watches the show, so he knew. But uh, I was getting into some of the details, and he's like, "Well, you know what? I knew Dave." And I was like, "What? <laughs> First of all." <laughs> Start there. <laughs> Continue, please. And he's like, well, no, it was the racing days when he was partners with Paul Newman in the hall. And I was like, wow, we were probably in some of the same places because I was just a fly on the wall, like looking in the garage where they were, you know? Totally. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. It is. It's a, it's, we say this all the time and it's, it's really a neat time to be us because mm -hmm. all your stuff's coming back around too. I'm not the only one. I'm just more vocal about it. Yeah. I see it a lot. There's a lot of synchronicity coming around. Jennifer Kramer was very, very impressed with you this weekend. I want to say that. She, she, it's not anything she wanted you to know or anything, but I just, she was very, very, I could see it in her eyes. And then she told me what she was focusing on. And I saw it too. And I was so impressed with That's you awesome. and your growth. Thanks. You deal with a tremendous amount of stuff. And then now you're like almost dealing with that and the old stuff again. I don't know how you're balancing it, but keep it up. It's fantastic. Thanks. All right, enough chatter. <laughs> Sorry. I'm also really excited to see everybody and you and our guest and the Porsche thing. This is like a great time of year. Stop it's a great, saying it. Great time. Yes. All right. <laughs> Mrs. Ryan, let's check in down south. Let's go behind the orange curtain and check in with Paul Kennel and the Auto Kramers <laughs> and see where they are today. Roll it, Hal. Hey, Mr. and Mrs. Ryan. So we just pulled over and. Uh, Here's our group of 2.2 liter 911s, as you could see. Oh, and there's a that thing. Ooh. Uh, I am driving this lovely 71 2.2 liter 911S Targa. Wrapped up. Uh, pretty cool car, and uh, very fortunate that uh, it's for sale. And I'm doing <laughs> miles, less than 300 miles restoration and the restorers on the rally as well so love you guys i think that's why the uh the front's wrapped in plastic uh. makes perfect sense remember he was saying we're going to take this car but it's a, cu it's a customer car and so we're going to wrap right. it with plastic and just avoid that makes sense dings because it was freshly restored and for sale well <laughs> i hope it's as fun as it looks it's a really pretty car yeah absolutely all right so that's it i'm caught up um yeah, we'll do it after uh mrs ryan it's time to ask the question that's on everyone's mind <laughs> <laughs> oh, what's going on mrs ryan <laughs> 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 there's going to be fewer drive throughs popping up around the united states okay uh, it's city by city. There's different mandates. Some are doing it for health reasons. A lot of it, the overarching reason is for emissions. So oh, because cars are just sitting there. They're idling oh, and they're the whole idling time. and mm. they're letting out gas emissions. Makes so sense. it's it, they're the ones that exist are still going to be there, but there's going to be less new ones. So okay. is it one of those things they're just going to regulate? new ones like you have to meet x amount of certain things and blah 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 yeah like long like beach a liquor is, license like they're just sort of limiting it long beach is putting a six month pause on like anything new coming mm. in so they can study it and see what's going on like Makes different sense. cities are handling it differently but it's an overarching national issue that we're looking at interesting yeah it's funny because americans invented all that shit with the fast food and the whole bit yeah i know now we're, we're like it's too much 
<laughs> live your life differently. We're but I wonder if this will in- invent things like walkthroughs and ride throughs, you know, scoot throughs, that skate is, throughs. That is walkthroughs is one of the things. Like if the front doors aren't accessible for some reason, like that's one of the mandates they want. It's like a food ATM. Oh, boy, this by this sounds like the future of every idiocracy movie and every other thing totally. I've ever seen. Just go uh, get your food out of a machine. Like thanks a lot. <laughs> all right, I'll reexamine that part. Um, no, I, we're, you're not saying that, but I'm. I'm jumping a few steps ahead. I'm with you. They're, they want to allow bikes and motor and yeah, that's other neat. stuff through. So uh, look at we'll look at that. Um, NASA is has commissioned 14 companies to examine how to refuel up there in, in space, space. Refuel in space, which is currently not an option. Right. right? So, uh, but I believe that's because of the propellant. What we're trying to do is change the propellant or the way that we do it, right? So that there may be a way to do it in space. That's part of this. Currently with jet fuel and whatever, you can't do that. Part of the, the, the 14 companies that they chose that they gave grants to, two of them being SpaceX and Blue Origins, I think is Amazon's, mm-hmm. um, is to, uh, for the, to figure out the technology to have stuff up there. So they're looking at liquid hydrogen and liquid right. Right. That's what I was looking at. Other other sources of propellant. Yeah. So that's what these uh, grants are for, really. Am I crazy that, like, is solar not an option because you're so far away? But every, the further you get away from one star, you get it's closer to another one. It's an option, but NASA tends to idiot proof things. So there's like right, four right. ways of doing stuff. So sure. I think they're just being extra careful. But it is, solar is an option that they're looking at. Yeah. I just, this, they, yeah. I was reading an article that may not even be the same one, but it sounds very similar. It's neat that they're looking at that stuff. It's I mean, cool. if you want to get anywhere past, like I think they said, even to Alpha Centurion, which is the closest star, uh, it's it would take like fifty thousand years or something. It just seems like a nice option to like expand that potentially. Yeah. Who knows? Um, okay. This made me laugh. It's a little. Uh, it goes both ways. Uh, the Sardinia in Italy. Is okay. like a mountainous, like touristy place. Okay. And they're suggesting and asking that you not use Google Maps. They use real maps instead. And I zoomed out a little bit. Um, tourists and notably. Oh, when you go there to visit, they you, recommend not the, using Google Maps. Yes, you because should buy a map or whatever. You should use maps. And I zoomed out to say, like, this is probably more applicable in more places than just like that. I fully agree. If you want to learn the surroundings, you should. You, but a map connects you. You're doing the brain power that's connecting you and your memory and your thoughts and all the stuff with the place you're going. It's far more connected versus just following the arrow. Well, apparently the Sardinia situation, uh, why part they're, they're asking specifically, like, don't use it, is that Google Maps is telling people to go down impassable areas. Yeah, right. Uh, one of them was a Porsche old. tourist. They were uh, <laughs> the people in uh, Porsche got stuck and had to have the emergency lifted, evacuated out of this area. Well, they really got stuck. They got <laughs> stuck, but bad. they're they're one of a bunch of people. So, just it, it was a nice reminder to see look what's around you and like know your surroundings a little bit. To me, it's unplug in general, and in that case, it's when navigating. Yeah, that's a mm-hmm. good for you. Um, and then lastly. Oh. There, uh, Tim Burton, you know him from uh, Night Before Christmas or whatever. Beetlejuice, many things. Sleepy Hollow, sure. Uh, maybe I'm crazy on this one. Did you know he did Mars Attacks? Yeah. Okay. I did not. Uh, <laughs> you did. You might have forgotten. I might have forgotten. He's got an exhibition in Vegas called yeah. Lost Vegas that's coming out, uh, I think, October 15th through February 15th. So it's open today. Oh, today. Yeah. Uh, at the Neon Hotel. There's a hotel in Vegas that like collects a neon signs of mm-hmm. like hotels. The old ones and... from like the Stardust and stuff. The yeah. old retired ones. Yeah, so he's doing an exhibit there. So I thought that's I read about it too, awesome. but they didn't say too much about what it was. Did you understand too much about what you were going to see at that exhibit? Because I was excited about it also based on the whole one sheet. And then I was like, well, what's inside? It sounds I, like a PR fluff. I read a, lo- a lot about it because uh, okay. I don't know a ton about his stuff. But this is the first time in a decade that any of his sculptures are going to be on display anywhere. Oh, I see. It's his personal stuff it's that he's made. Personal stuff. Uh, in my mind, I was reading and I'm thinking like, oh, the thing from Beetlejuice. You know, I was picturing all that crazy stuff. No, it's know? his personal stuff. And it's sculpture. Well, Dick Cavett, and- by the way, tying in talk shows. Nice. Nice. <laughs> You're a flake. You've always been a flake. Just kidding. Love that movie. Oh, and that's you got to be kidding. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> and that's been what's going on, Mrs. Ryan. <laughs> 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 All the best. <laughs>
Uh, you're the best, Mrs. Ryan. That's been, uh, yep, 19 minutes. That's pretty much it. First <laughs> half of the show is 20 minutes. Uh, let us take a quick break. Let's get our guest, Alex Bloom, in here. We're going to reminisce. We're going to talk about his movie on Netflix, and we're probably going to talk about the PEC and all the other stuff. Because he was here when I was doing this show in high school. Yes. <laughs> so, really there for the beginning. Uh, quick break. More to come right after this. Alex Bloom in that chair. Mrs. Ryan and me. See you in a few. Follow your dreams, or they'll chase you forever. They'll chase you forever. They'll chase you forever. We need to be somewhere where the people appreciate sensitivity and art and romance, and where the people understand and appreciate me. Then I have a great idea. Leave. So what's your deal? Hi. I know when a person's had sex and when they haven't. Just your type, huh? She's everyone's type. She's the next Valentino. You ready? Next Vera Wang. Yes, you're talented. She's the best. The best. The best designer in all of LA. Show him jazz. Bam. What is this? Does someone want their allowance? Please, Dad. Please. Guyana likes it, but you're a lesbian. Who told you that? Not afraid if I'm dying or I'm fine. People don't really make fun of you for being different anymore. They kind of think it's cool. Okay, well then, what are you? Kind of admire. What are you? What do you mean? <laughs> But they're still them. I like girls. I'm I'm a queer. I'm gay. And you're still you. That's great, but I'm not. Then what are you then? We're not doing anything wrong. I am. Right in that case, Mrs. Ryan, I say we just bring this thing back. And just fire it up here with Mr. Alex Bloom. Hi, Alex Bloom. Hi. What's happening, man? <laughs> oh, well, the tongue on my shoe, I'm having an issue with it because you were every just time fixing I put something. The yeah, and, but but it's it's can't get fixed. Oh. It's like the the crack in the in the well. <laughs> Which one? I don't know. Oh my the goodness. dam, the crack in the dam. What a problem. Yeah, I know. Life is tough. What is the situation? I have a tongue <laughs> situation. <laughs> Uh, welcome back, man. Thank it's you. really good to see you. One, because I feel like DNA wise, you go back a lot earlier with me than most people. Yes, my um, DNA goes way back. <laughs> I just, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Connection wise? It was just DN. Back then? Back then. Before then they I actually... added the A for Alex. That's amazing. And yeah, and now it's called DNA. Oh. You're so proud. <laughs> uh, when you were here last, we were really here just to kind of catch up and talk about your movie. Mm -hmm. um, since your movie has been picked up on Netflix, I feel yeah. like maybe that would be start with the plug right there. Just get that out of the way and then Absolutely. we can catch up. <laughs> yeah, it's been awesome. So it's Daddy been, Issues. Daddy is Issues is the movie and it's been a great ride. The last time we were here, uh, and when I say we, I mean me. That's right. You guys are always here, so I don't know why. The royal we. There it is. Um <laughs> I, that doesn't make any sense either, but I digress. Uh, we, um, yes, I was here July 31st, 2018. So it's over a year ago. It think. is, right. yes. According yeah, so then to a the lot calendar. has changed in here probably. Yeah, a lot. Um, you guys are both still here, so that <laughs> yeah. hasn't changed. <laughs> With um, the furniture. Yes, yes. <laughs> um, but uh, so since then, yeah, we were, our Daddy Issues was released in theaters on um April 19th, it had a limited theatrical run. Okay, awesome. Yeah, You I were finishing Post and stuff last yeah, time, maybe yeah. getting the, the, the marketing push ready. Right. Well, in fact, now that I see the um, date, we were kind of just still figuring out our distribution wow. plans. And, wow, uh, this is cool to see the other side of it then. All right, it so, is, it, so yeah. it came out limited release in so theaters. So it came out limited release in theaters, and then on the same day it was out on iTunes and On Demand and Google Play and Amazon, and it's still available in all those places. And then um, go download it now, right? Yes, it's right now. <laughs> this, yeah. Well, well, after the show, obviously, first the show, <laughs> then see see daddy issues. Yeah, <laughs> right. I mean, why not? And then, um, yeah, last month um, 
We uh, premiered on Netflix. That's huge. And, it's huge yeah. these days. I know that a theatrical release sounds much more exciting and more impressive, especially with the way we used to work. But these days, everyone seems to be more impressed with, wow, more you got accessible. on Netflix. Holy smokes. Cool Good for you. Calling card. Well, you know, it was very gratifying because, um, well, this was the first feature our production company, Under One Roof Productions, did. And um, our goal kind of at the beginning was um, – get into Outfest, which was a, a big festival. Um, the movie is uh, LGBTQ themed, and that's a, uh, the biggest LGBTQ themed festival. I don't festival. want to give anything away, but are those the daddy issues? <laughs> no, oh, no, no, great. they're not. No. It's full of surprises. Yeah, no, no, they're not. Yes, <laughs> yes. Um, but, but yeah, and then get on Netflix, and so we accomplished our our original goals which is really exciting and now do you it's feel out good about that though because you're always so hyper like nervous all the time about all your stuff <laughs> and you're just so neurotic but can you enjoy any of these small successes on the way to your bigger successes i yes but okay. it's not <laughs> it's funny it's it's enjoy i i've enjoyed every aspect of it the, mm -hmm. the good and the difficult and in a way actually in reflection i kind of um Look, making a feature is re is is difficult, uh, an indie feature <laughs> especially, and then there's so many steps to it. And kind of in reflection, what I've been thinking a lot and saying um, on non-talk shows just to random strangers. <laughs> non-talk uh, shows. Yeah. Um, <laughs> is that, you know, all the steps along the way, and I think we could relate to this no matter what, um, but especially here in L.A., and, and, and people are always very often telling you what is going to be really difficult and probably what isn't going to happen. So yeah. it's like, oh, you wrote the movie. Okay, well, good luck finding a way to fund it. Oh, you filmed the movie. Uh, now you have to do post. That's impossible. Well, everybody wants oh, to get in your way. Yeah, yeah and I don't think they're doing it project. maliciously. I think it's just kind really? of... No, I really don't. I mean, You I, think it's just ingrained in the programming of being out here in this business, etc.? Yeah, I do. And I think mm. that um, it's kind of like for many people a natural fallback mm. to like I don't think they're doing maliciously to like wish you non-success. I think that that there is just kind of like this attitude of like, well, you're not yeah, them. So everybody else. Right. They're only it's most just, people I find are rooting for themselves out here. That's so true. when something like that comes up for me, it's generally like, well, let me just throw an obstacle in front of your way because you're moving too quick or whatever. And people, it's kind of like, I don't even see it, bro. Nice try. Yeah. People are definitely <laughs> rooting for themselves. I, I try to root for um, I'm probably the opposite. I, I think I root for everybody but myself. I must, I'm a single musketeer. I'm yeah. still like one for all and all for one. I boo myself a lot. Do you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I support um, you, so maybe it evens out. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I yay you um, all the time. Cheers. I meant scare, like boo. Oh, yeah, yeah. not jeers. Well, whatever, but both. <laughs> oh, um, no. But anyway, uh, to get back to it. Um, you need to hang out with more comedians. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I think yes. so. Yes. I do, because I th your brain fires so quickly. Uh-huh. All right, well, yeah, I mean, I'm hanging out with a couple right now. Oh, no, I'm, no, yeah. Um, <laughs> I just ones. kept thinking along the way, well, I watch movies all the time, and I go to the movies all the time. So someone is making and getting movies out there. <laughs> yeah. uh, let's just keep going. And I think the thing is, keep going. And then, yeah, the success that comes out of it, it was it's very rewarding, more than exciting. It's such a long run. Like Where? Where is it rewarding? Like emotionally and your financially, like what's well, what's rewarding to you from all this hard work? The the pro, like that the process happened and we were a part of the process and we made it happen. Accomplishing your goal, maybe. yeah, yeah, yes. it's wonderful. And just the idea that something that we created is out there and. Whether one person or one million people are affected by it in in either a negative or positive way, luckily it's been really positive. Yeah. We have like great reviews, eighty eight percent on Rotten Tomatoes. Great, that's um, really good for your first yeah. movie. That's amazing, right? Yeah. <laughs> now, isn't Rotten Tomatoes? It's funny. Like they're uh, speaking of people rooting for you to fail. Their their <laughs> syntax is like you're probably gonna fail. Because rotten I never understood comes because, first. Right. Well, and, and just as a, in general, and then you used to throw yeah. the rotten they fruit. They tried to flip it. Yeah. Yeah. 
But anyway, well, no. But it was Rotten Tomatoes, wasn't? Isn't that what like Waka Waka Waka? You would right. throw Rotten Tomatoes. At yeah. you. So it was. Yeah. We don't like you. Jeers, jeers. Right, right. So they. So it's so funny they're the critics, sometimes. and then maybe if you're getting eighty percent from the critics, that's really good. Yeah, eighty-eight. Eighty-eight. Please don't deny eight percent. <laughs> it's wonderful. Uh, yeah. Yes. And uh, so yeah, yeah, Jay. I mean, come on. Uh, it's eighty-eight. Um, yeah. So anyway, the whole process has been very rewarding. And then the other thing is, though, you got to move on, and and you can't. Ooh, um, that's tough when you've been living in something for so long. Right. Right. So how does and, that go? Well, you know, it's funny you say that because the other thing is like when I mean, now the movie's been out for a while. It's been out since April. It's kind of, you know, uh, the the frenzy of it has kind of died mm. down, and it's out in the world and needs to grow on its own. But, not, not run its course so much, but it's maturing. No, keep going. It's just yep. not a – it's for us, it's not an everyday thing anymore. Right. It's It's been – there's really nothing left It's in the world now. Do. Yeah. Um, but what's funny is you're over it when everybody starts oh, knowing shit. it. Oh, Yes. <laughs> yes. So, like, yeah, it's been shot. We wrote it. It's been done. It's been edited. You're done. And then people start to see it, and you're like, "Oh yeah, that's right." Uh, that's even new. mentally, you've <laughs> moved on, right? You're that's like, what "I'm, I'm saying, on other." Yeah, I gotta move on th- other stuff and write something else and figure out, you know, produce something else sure. and keep going. It's funny nobody ever talks about that. No, nobody ever does, um, and that's why I'm here to talk about <laughs> things that nobody ever talks about. And also, Robert Forrester, mm. um, he was on uh, Twin Peaks season three. Oh, where I'm a huge Twin Peaks. That show changed my life. That, David again, Lynch weren't we like in middle school or high school back then? Yeah, seventh grade is okay. when uh, I think it came on. I remember watching that show and being like, well, oh, it was, "Yeah, it was different." Somebody thinks the way I. Really, you got it that I'm much? Not alone. Yeah, it really Connected? changed me. Yeah, it, it, from the from the very first episode. Was it just Twin Peaks, or was it David Lynch's storytelling that you found in other projects as well? Well, and, and that I was didn't. Just the first one. I didn't know of David Lynch at the time. I mean, I knew the name, okay. but I, w- I didn't wasn't immersed in his work. Right. Twin Peaks was my entryway into him. And, and <laughs> can you imagine your seventh grade? Well, I've already seen Blue Velvet. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> a couple times. You know, the funny thing is, I saw the night I saw Blue Velvet was in high school. I watched it at my friend Brad Ferguson's house, um, and driving home, I got into a major car accident. I was so affected and so no for real. Now, uh, I like to say the car accident wasn't my fault. Um, it was. <laughs> Most okay. people like the to say police. that. <laughs> Most people like to say that. I think. say it was. But yeah, someone who we went to high school with, um, I, I kind of ran a stop sign. We got to the stop sign and both ways were available to get to my house. Is this in Wilton? Yeah, it's in Wilton. It was on um, Liberty Street. Okay. So you can make a left or a right. And end up getting to my house. Now, for whatever reason, like the traditional direction in my family was to go to the right. For that night, I went to the left. It was literally equidistant. It just was, I don't know. So I I kind of did like a what they call a rolling stop. Oh, yeah, that'll yeah. get you. So you're not supposed to do that. But I was in... Wilton cops are looking for that also. Oh, yes. And uh, e- even if you're white. And uh, <laughs> I was in I was in Blue Velvet World and, and, and Dennis Hopper and Isabel, the whole thing. Oh, and I did wow. the rolling stop. Yeah, all the weirdness yeah, of it. Yeah, I was it. just in it and it, was, and it was like midnight and I just... And so, yeah, someone hit my car and it was, it was a... I mean, obviously I'm fine. Uh, I used to be like way taller. I remember. That's what yeah. I like to say. That was, got, that was when they me. took yeah, out those really six should, vertebrae. Yeah, I remember. Seven, exactly. Yeah. Um, I used to be seven. And, but, and four rib, I believe, two mm-hmm, on each side. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they had yep. to come out as well. Yeah, they were connected. Yeah. And at that time, all the tongues in my shoe were great. Yeah. And ever since then, I've had a tongue issue. That's a flaw. But I, I did a rolling stop, and uh, the guy crashed into me, and, and so on and so forth. And the first thing my mom said, the first thing, I mean, after, are you okay? But they knew I was okay because some, someone called and said, like, everything's okay, but your son is in a car accident. <laughs> My mom goes, why did you make a left at that stop sign? Oh. <laughs> but the truth is, she's right. Had you not. Yes, but. Yeah. <laughs> Our family goes over yeah. here, and here's why. We make a right. That's what she's yeah, saying. Yeah. Here's why. Yes. yes. See yes. what happens when yeah. you go right against the family? is right. <laughs> left is, is wrong, I guess. Yeah. Is that right? It was always the opposite with the earrings when we were kids. That's Remember right. Remember that was left was right, right was wrong. 
if you were not trying to be gay. Right. <laughs> so that was the that was the code left, back in the left day. Left was right, right. Was that reminds me of like we would go. It meant I would, nothing. There was no actual math to this. It was no. So stupid. When I would go visit my grandmother in Florida, um, she was from New York, and you know, like like many migrated. Uh, yeah, yeah. They, they moved down, and then um, I think Jerry Seinfeld used to say it's the law. I think something like yeah. that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And she used to tell us um, the channels were different. So, like, in New York, oh, I see. Connecticut, like, two was CBS and seven was ABC. Because we had four the New York affiliates. NBC. Right, right. We were lucky. So she would tell me, like, you know, two is three, four is six, <laughs> seven is eight. Instead of telling you what things actually were, yeah. what you knew is two. Yeah. Five is 11 and there is no five. <laughs> That was her thing. So, yeah, left was right, right was wrong, right was right. Who knows? Wow. So, Blue Velvet had you get in a car accident. You were fine, and, and the other person was fine in the whole bit. He was angry. Yeah. But it's like, why did you take a right? You're yeah, supposed to go right. Everybody knows. He also, I remember in my days, I think I may have heard someone say, oh, no, my beer. So, um, oh, on the other side. Yeah. 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 But anyway. But um, your fault. All was good. It definitely was my fault. That's a shame. Um, but uh, I've only gotten into like 11 car. I'm not a, I'm not a strong we've, driver. We've talked about so, that. What yeah. are you driving now? What do you have now? The I same have thing as a, before? A, a Porsche. Should okay. I be saying that? All right. Yeah. Yes. I have, uh, well I have seven, actually. Um, <laughs> well dinged. I have a, a, um, a Mercedes. Yeah. A, a C. A car. A car. Right? Like yeah. a lease car, like a regular car. car. Yes. A yeah. regular car. In fact. That's the right car for you. I haven't worn this sweater in a while. <laughs> And I brought it here because I wanted to impress both of you with a, a nice sweater. And Success. Is that yeah. mohair? Uh, no, I don't know. Who, what's mohair? Did I like, make it up? Mohair? mohair is like from Larry Kelly and Mo. <laughs> yeah, mohair. Yeah. Uh, I don't think it's his. I can't believe it. That's so yeah. great. That's funny. Um, I'm wearing my Yankee hat to support Yankees in the playoffs. I know nothing about sports. I'm you probably remember Yankee that from fan. high school. I, you know, I think about that every night, Jay. Do you? Yeah, right. Is that Before what you I go think to bed, about? I think about a few things, and then I go, I remember Jay doesn't know anything about sports. I like that you're making fun of me now, but earlier when I said, uh, blah, 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 and you're like, no, I watched the show. It's like, well, wait a second. I don't know how much you know or how much you don't do. know about what we do. Yes. Uh, do you? Uh, I may have missed the episode called uh, Jay Doesn't Know Anything About Sports. Yeah, There's Jay plays so sports many. ball is what yeah. that was called. Uh, so you're a Yankee fan born and raised from being – oh, your dad was a Yankee fan probably. No, my dad is a Phillies fan. I'm oh, actually Phillies. from New York. I moved to Wilton in Right for before me, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's why. Was I, a, was, I a, was I a – were you – how was being a new kid in Wilton for you? Because you were a freshman or a yeah. Soft, yeah, freshman? It was um, for the first, I'd say, bit. Definitely the first. Well, you don't, high school isn't in semesters, but like the first. Ours was. Oh, was? Okay. Yeah. We had well, a, a college campus and we did semesters. Okay. Well, there you go. First, and the, I remember the rolling schedule and all that shit. Oh, do I remember it? <laughs> yeah. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, B, C, D. You do remember yeah. it. You actually remember D -A -B -C -H -E -F. the primer. Yes. Dab Chef. Yeah, I remember everything. We had more classes than there were periods in a day because they ran the whole school like a college campus. They literally trusted the kids and, and most of us actually whatever. <laughs> yes, most of us whatever. That's right. Yeah, I, I like to m blow just people's just minds with specificity. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it works really well. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was really difficult. Um, I mean, I was from Manhattan. I definitely had a little bit much different but you zero were to 14 than everybody else did. That's what and I'm... also everyone came from the same school, pretty much. They yeah. all, there was one middle school. They came up through school. the system, right? Yeah. So kind of everyone knew each other, and I didn't know anybody. So I get there a year later, and he's incredibly popular and very, very uh, accomplished within the school already. Let, let's calm down. <laughs> you went on to be class president. So <laughs> yes, it's I, true. I, I, what yes, I'm saying yes, is yes, true, yes. and sorry, you don't like it. Uh <laughs> He was already kind of like cock of the walk, and I thought he was – I thought you had already been there. I didn't – I found out that you moved to Wilton before me by a year the last time you were here, mm -hmm. 2018. Well, there you go. July we graduated. <laughs> we graduated in 1995. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And I apparently was cock of the walk. It was band, theater. Yeah. Uh, anything I was interested in, you were already there. Yes, yes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And you had already planted yourself and, 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 and were, were doing very well at those things. That's how I felt. And it was uh, one of those like, ah, oh, they've already got that guy. I wanted to be that guy, but they've already got one. No. Well, I, I think I said this last time. Because I, I was that guy like in the last school. I actually wanted to be you school. a lot. 
because that's like why your, I was setting yeah, this up. Yeah, yes, of course, I yeah. wanted to hear that again. Yeah, um, uh, but 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 why? Why? Why would anyone? What did you think was good about me that truly wasn't at the time? You know, you were very um, comfortable with who you were. And I, I think it was, it was also really, um, I mean, I don't think I had these kinds of uh, thoughts at the time. I just was kind of like, that guy's cool, um, you know, and you were kind of an enigma. I thought um, I was hideously uncool. I really did. I thought I was hideously was, uncool. But that is interesting. You know, something. Uh, oh, I see. The standout. Yeah. Who's... When I, I actually went back to Wilton High School. Um, I directed a, a few musicals there uh, as an adult. Hang on, um, did I know that? Did we talk about this last time? That's wonderful. I don't remember. It was July 31st, Oh, gee whiz. All right, yeah. this is wonderful. <laughs> yeah. Within the school system. Like yes, at, at the school. At high school. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, I, uh, I yeah, directed a bunch of senior shows. A couple of them I wrote. A couple so of them we, we, you know, got the rights for and did. And then I went back later, and I was a music director for some of them. But anyway, I'm not trying to... <laughs> This is what I want to hear. I'm not trying to brag. I really want to hear this stuff. Drama, Sorry, I'm uh, making you say director. it about yourself. <laughs> no, what I wanted to say, though, is that I realized at the time that the kids who I had a connection, most of the kids who I had a connection with mm -hmm. and really kind of warmed up to, I mean, they were all great, were the ones who I ne wasn't necessarily in the group with in high school. But I always kind of wanted to be in that that group and that I include you in that, wow. in that thing. You know, you uh, had the uh, camera, you had the talk show, you had the whole kind of connection to the industry and it was all these things that I was interested in and didn't really even know how to express my interest in yet. So, and, and wow. yeah, and very enigmatic. So I liked that and um, yeah. Well, how about this? The feeling was mutual all along. Isn't that kind of neat? I yeah, love finding yeah. that stuff out later in life. You know, I mean, I think yeah. that's kind of a neat balance thing that if I knew when I was younger, I might have looked at things differently. And so. then, I mean, you know. Oh, then it got good. Amazing, uh, powerful, inspiring woman. Oh, man. Is, uh, you know. Can you believe it? No. No, I mean, yes, I can. <laughs> I can't believe it's, it. It's tough, though, what she goes through and then has that smile and that laugh. and It's really, really inspiring, and it has been a, like a big change. Uh, it, it, that, that, that is something that I, I think about a lot, and I really, really am just so glad that we know each other. And, uh, yeah, you definitely inspire me. Getting me all flushed. No, Thanks you don't so much. even really look flushed. It looks basically your skin has not changed. <laughs> One bit, I can't so. control my temperature, so yeah. I like right. that. She can't yeah. regulate. So we'll just have to trust her. <laughs> can't regulate at yes. all. <laughs> yeah, I wish I could control my temperature. I just feel it on the inside now, yeah. you know. <laughs> Flushed on the inside, regular on the outside. Cool as a cucumber. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my voice just got when I said outside. That was cool. Outside. That's amazing to me. Uh, I didn't know that you went back, and or I forgot, but that's so interesting to me because it – that's where I connected with you. Almost all of my memories with you are in either the, well, it was the little theater back then. Mm -hmm. They didn't have the other one. No, they didn't. Um, and, and that or the band trips or band stuff. It's funny that they didn't have the big theater, yet the other one was still called the little theater. I have the answer like, to that. In comparison to what? It was always intended. I found, I found, I asked that question when we were in school, and Mrs. Graybill gave me the answer. D uh, Dave and Steve's yes, mom. Yes, I remember. Public speaking, and she used to run that program that you used to direct uh, different times. Yes, she also once uh, picked up my wardrobe uh, that I had a quick change for and and hid it <gasps> because she said, I told you all not to leave your clothes on the floor. <laughs> I was like, this is happening now, though. Like, uh, maybe punish later. Was it Oren Scrivello? Which, uh, which uh, role I don't, was I don't, it? I don't, I don't oh, that's remember. amazing. No, she was gone for Oren Scrivello. God, she was great. I loved her so much. Mm -hmm. uh, anyway, I can't even remember why we just brought her up, but for some reason. Another person that I, I mean, who wouldn't want to bring up Susan Graybill? Shh, I, I don't know, but I give her a lot of credit in my life for helping me become the person I am because she told me it was okay. That's awesome. Yeah, she was a very um, She knew warm, I was a weirdo, and she woman. let me be okay with that. She helped me be okay with that. Well, the weirdos are the ones who end up being the ones. It's very That's profound. Right. That's very right. Astute. That's from my <laughs> profound book of things like elevators go up, but they also 
go down. Oh, wow. I didn't know where you were going to go with yeah. that. Yeah. Well, I was in advertising. Oh. That, like, that kind of uh, lexicon was very yeah. popular. We, we every the door Trump that opens, it also closes. <laughs> and then people are like, you know what? That's right. <laughs> Doors do open and close. Holy shit. I never thought of yeah. it that way. Yes. Oh, it's like Twitter to sell things. Yeah. <laughs> you put your socks on one foot at a time. Wait, I do that. Yeah. Wait uh, a second. I don't yeah. do my socks at the same time either. I know. Oh, I'm just like, like comedy. Him. I tried to do that once. <laughs> Everything's uh, related for a different reason and then an accident. <laughs> what you brought up a very interesting point. I'm going to go back to daddy issues. Is that Please. all right? Can, yeah, we, qu- can yeah. we quit this riffing? Yeah, sure. <laughs> um, with daddy issues, you mm-hmm. mentioned, you brought up a really good point of. N- n- there comes a time when you got to let go and move on to the next thing. Yes. Uh, it sounds like, and basically you said, it's becoming about that time. What's next for you? What are you working on? What do you want to do? What can we help you with? Do you want to help us with stuff? There's all sorts of opportunities coming up, and I want to hear what you're doing. Blah, blah, blah. Wow. This Give me something good. turned into a job. Give me something good. No, 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 no. You know what I'm saying. Yes, I do. That's um, just like, that was a joke. get it together. I need to start hanging out with more comedians. Yes. Yeah, so, so you can find out what's funny and what isn't. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. um, Our barometer's pretty high that's here. That's called a, a bring back, what I just did. <laughs> call for back. The call back. back. Yeah. I call it a bring back. I know you did. I <laughs> noticed. <laughs> oh, we tell you who to hang out with all the time. <laughs> so, okay. Well, well I'm, I'm working on a script right now for um, a family uh, movie. Uh, that uh, was inspired by um, my creative partner, Amara Cash, who's, Still? who runs uh, Under One Roof. You know, together we do that, and she is has been the driving force for this film. And uh, it's been a little bit of a challenge. I've never written anything for. It's like a, it's like a Coco Karate Kid type Ooh, film, and it's definitely for. Those are two. Dramatically different films. Well, it has a sports angle and a heritage angle, and how oh, those I come see what together. You're doing. Okay. Yes, yeah, that that's called a, a pitch. Mm. Um, so, no, it's not. Oh, it's not. No, I don't know any. <laughs> so terms. it's the Karate Kid meets Coco, and I'm sure. I'm connecting the wrong pieces. Yeah. I'm like, oh, Karate in the afterlife. Yeah. No. <laughs> a lot of alliteration. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Called um, a log line. No, like inspiring <laughs> sports heritage that type yeah. of thing. But it's very much a family film and uh, I've never written anything like that before and it's very you know those films are also very um their their narrative is is very clear for a reason you know you want to inspire and you want the audience to relate to the character yeah and and pull on the emotional cords and all that and um it's been fun it's taking me longer than I thought it would um is that good it's is, that, is that good sometimes when the process is harder and it's really frustrating me, like the product ends up being so much better I in the end? I think so. I think, I, think, um, I think that is going to end up what's happening. But also during it, you know, I, I tend to put a lot of pressure on myself to try to finish. But um, I, I uh, You put a lot of pressure on yourself in general. The pro- I do, I, yeah, I'm doing it right now. I notice. Yeah, yeah. I can see it um, in your eyes. Oh You're doing gosh. great. There's nothing to worry about. I'm, I'm kidding. You've got awesome don't, stuff don't to pitch. I feel and... pressured, but now maybe I do a little, <laughs> a little bit. A um, little bit. Just got awkward. <laughs> so working on that, I, um, I'm... Did you have that in mind already, or was once Daddy Issues was done and that content had exhausted you, it sounds almost like this is like a bookend on the other side of things? Yeah, well, I was mean, truthfully, I didn't have really ever have it in mind. That was Amara's uh, vision and story. I mean, she... We have been discussing it for a long time, but I, and I'm very oh, you didn't inspired write that one. to do it. Daddy issues, I, I did write. You did write, yes. okay. And this one, um, we're we're also writing, and I'm I'm doing the. the Am I wrong right then? It, maybe how it was described. Maybe I got it wrong. It sounds more like an opposite tonally it's from It's completely Daddy. opposite. Yeah, okay. It could not be more different. Okay. Yeah, Daddy issues is definitely like an R-rated movie makes you think and there's a lot of other stuff yeah going it's on. heavy duty heavy, yeah. it's kind of i mean there's it's a lot of it's there's funny it's sad it's it's all this but based on a lot of realness right this movie is definitely for kids awesome and 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 parents and awesome. and adults who enjoy those it's like a it's like more of a family mainstream it sounds fantastic film. it sounds like something i'd love to watch don't worry yeah. about that we'll yeah that move for you i um <clears throat> yeah, would you i mean come on chad <laughs> <Yeah>. chad <laughs> Uh, he leaves at ten o'clock. He's never yeah. here for the show. It's amazing. Yeah. He doesn't hang. No, he doesn't hang. Hanging, Hanging Chad. Chad. Mm. Yes. <laughs> Which is why we're all in this mess to begin with. Do people remember the two thousand election? <laughs> I, I don't. I I do. That's something I think about all the time. And I'm very still very angry about. Um, but do you, you are you still political? You get political? 
Yeah, I mean, I'm very concerned. Um, it's really been uh, just, I, I don't want to turn into that, but I do believe that that stealing that election um, was a huge turning point uh, and the ramifications have obviously trickled, uh, you know, trickled, the opposite of trickled. So, so <laughs> continued yeah, snowballed. for, yes, yeah, snowballed. Perfect. 19 years now. And who knows how long they're going to. I mean, everything would have been different if the person who won actually won. I don't think you can make anything about one thing, but I see what you're saying. Yeah, I do. Actually, I think that a lot of times there's like an original incident that was wrong. And then everything snowballs from that. I'm saying it probably was way before that one yeah. thing that you're oh, locking on to. Yes, years of of uh, so it's one of those where it's like, system. okay, yeah. sure, I get it. And I'm, I, I mean, here's the thing: I used to get very upset about all sorts of things yeah. too. And then once we started living about ourselves, it was like, who's got room for that? Of course, <laughs> of course, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. And then uh, what that also did was allowed me to not be a part of it, so I was able to expand back outside of it and then look at it with a, 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 a you know, a kind of a a different filter. I don't mm -hmm. want to say a better one or a worse one, just a different filter, mm -hmm. perhaps one with a much longer zoom. And uh, and it was kind of like you see through the bullshit. And it's like, oh, yeah, that's just because he wants this, and they want it this, really and they is. want this, and they want this. And, oh, okay, and it's just all about... You can see it in a yeah, very it's, binary it's way. No big deal. It's I'm a lot of you the same way. Yeah. Well, the thing is... And then the is, only way I can win is to not play. Yeah. The thing that's happening now, though, that really, to me, is the most uh, troublesome and frustrating is, you know... What would the the climate change and the environment? That's a be all and end all. You know, I'm, we glad, all go that, to, I'm glad that that's where it's shifting. To, we all it, go it's to sort of uncontestable. Yeah, we go to school and uh, you know follow a schedule D C B E F G and depending on where you go, we, we, we go we go to school and we learn about history and see like okay. This happened, and it was a mistake, and and, right, don't and do that again. people learn a little bit, and the ramifications. What happened? What happened to the Romans? What happened to the Greeks? What happened with segregation? And we learn, and we read these textbooks and whatnot. Uh, if the world is over, we're not going to be able to look back and say, "Oh, this happened," but look how we came out of it. There is right. going to be nothing. Well, you're so really you're nothing right else matters. Wrong. You're right and wrong. I agree with you, but again, with that long, long zoom out. Yeah. It's my opinion that that's happened so many times. We're not the only fucking civilization. You know what I mean? It's it, this. Fine. Fair enough. In another X amount of years, oh, the clouds will clear and another thing will come up and then some sunlight yeah. and that's wet too. And then there's life. And it's yeah. like, uh, you know. Yeah. And then they, <laughs> in a thousand years, they've figured out their civilization and how they do things. And hopefully it's different, whatever that looks like. Uh, and then they go back and they're like, oh, look at this area over here on the east coast of uh, North Co, whatever the heck that it's called at that point. And they're like, oh, the remnants of the city. Oh, who built that? Right. You know what I mean? It's, yeah. it's all we have with the pyramids and the Incas. and the, It's all the same so stuff the over and over and over. So the new people are going to be using over. their hands a lot and going like this? I have no idea. Who that's, built that? That's right. Yeah, that's yeah. a universal sign. It, we're a little bit in a situation, I just feel like, where like the house is on fire and we're arguing about what color the couch should be. No disagreement. Yeah. So all the, of this but stuff. But what they seem to be in disagreement with is why is the house on fire? Because if there is a way to get out, okay, yes, by all means, let's not. It seems to be some people are like, nah, man, it's done. It was done 20 years ago. There ain't nothing we can do. Yeah. And they're just like, fuck it, because it's not even right. humans who did it. And I understand that from a greed standpoint. I can't align with it in any other way. And they're I just don't wrong, have the greed. Though. Yeah. I don't There's have facts. the greed, so I can't understand it. Well, I don't know. I've heard very convincing sides from both, from, from both of like whether it's man-made uh, global warming or whether this is just the cycle of the whole thing. None of us in this lifetime are ever going to win that argument because nobody fucking knows. No, but the facts are that it's happening regardless Agreed. Agreed. of who did it. Agreed. So, again, to use the fire what analogy, do we do? it doesn't matter how the fire started. It's got to be put out. I agree with you. Good. Yes. You should. <laughs> Some people are saying it can't be put out, though. That's the argument of like that. Well, then who the hell cares? Yeah, I that, guess. That we, we're, but... We've been greedy from the beginning, so we're just going to go till the end. I hope that that doesn't prevail. I agree with that would you. Be sad. I think I think you should write a movie combating all of these things, so that people can then see. Oh, 
there's another the, all of the movies when I was a kid of the future were the future that we're heading into Blade Runner and and, and oh they're always the movies are always right <clears throat> but which is what's so frustrating about what's happening but now. what about like Tomorrowland Tomorrowland changed my life the Brad Bird movie that yeah. nobody went to see yeah I mean it was expensive they made it for 10 years and then nobody went to go see it I was one of those nobodies I did not see I've it. seen it probably 10 times because I think it's brilliant I, I think it's probably it his best movie over The Incredibles and uh, Batteries Not Included which I think are both fantastic <laughs> Fantastic Not movies. Included is a great movie. Yeah. It is. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Um, anyway, they yeah. paint a picture for a different future, which is quite bright and full of possibility. Well, a lot of the movies that – look, take the movie that everyone loves so much, Star Wars. I don't get that one, but all right. But okay. Everyone, everyone still, else. Uh, it's a good example. It's a, you got the, the Empire and the, the Jedi, the bad guys and the good guys. We want – we all watch that movie, most of us, and want the Luke Skywalker and whatever the late the Jedi you know, team, whatever the, the Jedi good guys. that team. We're rooting for them to win. We're rooting for Spider Man to win. We're rooting for the Avengers to win. Oof, yeah. But then in real life, we can't seem to extrapolate that and see. Oh, this is Palpatine well, mm, instead of Luke. you're getting you're getting there now. I think that I think these movies are part of the problem. Mm. It's interesting. The Marvel movies I don't know as well, but from what I've eh, whatever, I don't want I don't want to argue a point that I don't know well enough to argue. I don't but, know the Marvel movies well either. For all I know the Avengers could be bad. I, I well, don't what know it seems yet. to the anti-hero is rising. Yeah. In all of these movies it seems and I go back to even for me it was Tony Soprano was the first one for mm-hmm. me because I loved him, but meanwhile he's a, not a great guy. He's a wonderful family man, well, he's yeah, a wonderful the, supporter, wonderful caregiver, all of the things, but like he also murders people and doesn't, you know what I mean? There's a lot of other shit there too. Uh, but we were rooting for him. Same with Don Draper. Another one, good one. Or, yeah, adulterer, yeah. all sorts yeah. of things. There's and a liar. lot of those kind of uh, iconic characters that show the full spectrum of humanity that yes. exists in people. And that's more real than like, I'm a superhero once I put my cape on and I can fix anything. Yeah. It's like, Well, we're all human. Right. And that, that's actually a big part of, of the movie daddy issues is that there's not just a good side and a bad side to you. There's... We're multifaceted. We're all um, flawed. Everybody's in, in a gray a area, right? There yeah, is we're no... all a gray area. Yeah. And that's actually another reason why I like David Lynch so much, because he lives in that gray area. That's called a callback. Yes. Nice job. <laughs> or a bring back. <laughs> I fucking love you. I really do. I miss you every time I see you. I miss you, too. Um and I'm I'm so happy to be here. How can we how can we do stuff? Uh, to, to, how can we work on something together so that we have an excuse to um, be around one another more often? Well, we'll here, have to figure it out. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, you always wanted to write for a late night talk show, and we're getting there. Yeah, so let's <laughs> uh, you know call my manager. No, uh, uh, we'll we'll yeah we should start writing some stuff. Right. Another fun thing that I'm I'm doing uh, is on um, Tuesday. October uh, 29th, mm. uh, I and another uh, Wilton alumni, actually, her name is Amy Sullivan. Uh, she's younger than us. Um, we're, we're doing this, starting this um, uh, monthly event called Drinking Stories, okay. where we uh, have people come up and tell a story about a given topic. This month's topic is what's the scariest thing that happened to you okay. uh, for Halloween. Of course. And uh, you also, uh, it has like an open mic um, <clears throat> element to it as well. So if you want to tell a story, you can you can come up and we'll have prepared, you know, people uh, already set and it's at the Sassafras Saloon. Where's that? 7.30 to 9. It's on Vine Street in Hollywood. Okay. Yeah. Is that like a hip and trendy place? Is that why I don't know it? Like the sassafras um, sounds like you know something from the old west. Yeah, well, and well, everything oh, from the old west. But you know what I'm is, saying. Is trip, uh, <laughs> hip and trendy. I said trip, trip and hendy. Uh, no, it's a cool place actually. I've been there a few times. Um, I mean, I'm definitely not a hip and trendy type. That, Great, but but it's cool. Hip and trendy would keep me away. Yeah. No, I. You don't want to see weird and hip and trendy. It doesn't go together. No, it's going to be a fun and uh, interesting evening of just fun stories. And this is the first one of hopefully many. Yeah, this is the inaugural one, and then we'll be doing it once a month. And, um, you know. It sounds fun. How do you know Amy Sullivan? She was in one of the musicals that I. Went back uh, to direct? Went back. I think actually the one she was in, I I was a music director for, not the. Uh, I don't really even remember right now, but yeah, she was in one of those. And actually, so cool. her family, her she has an older brother that was just one year younger than us in high school. 
So I Tim? knew them. I'm trying to think of this. There were Sullivans, and I just yeah, can't remember who they name were. I didn't Mike. know that. Mike Sullivan. Yeah. Okay. And then the, and then there's also Ed Sullivan. Oh, I'm not familiar not with his work. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, anyway, she's amazing. She's a really talented actor, comedian, writer. So and, she moved uh, out here, and then you guys got. We always kind of stayed in touch. Um, That's awesome. Because also, I just because I knew her family for so long and. Her, uh, I mean, this is getting very, very specific um, for your audience, but they had a thing called Wilton Children's Theater yeah. that I used to work at in high at the, school. At the play shop? No, it was. Oh, Wilton Middlebrook. Children's Theater yeah. at the yes, of yeah. course. And she was in it's that. Like a summer I actually stock knew this too. girl from when she was like a little little kid. No kidding. So, yeah, when she came out here, we just kind of kept in touch, and yeah, now we're doing this. You're a good guy, Alex Bloom. Do you ever think Tragedy. about that? About being a good guy? Yes. Someone who's uh, so hard on themselves, do you ever think, well, you know what, at least I'm a good guy? I try very hard. I mean, I, it's not like you have to try hard. Once you decide that you want to be a good person, you stop trying, and it just kind of works. Life is much easier when you're nice. Holy crap. <laughs> it, it just is. Uh, I have. Did lived... you always know that? Did no. You, did you I ha- learned you learn the lesson. like yeah. about five years ago. That's about right. Um, do you think it's age? Benefits. Do you think? Yeah. Yes. I think it's age. I think it's experience. I don't think it's a. No, I don't think it's the number. I think it's just the mileage. Life. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The life experience, and you spend a lot of time. I think, at least, especially creative people, when you're younger, you're you feel very competitive, and mm. you feel very um, sometimes just like like very focused on yourself and it can make you angry. It can make it can make everything kind of very uh, acute, mm. and then. Um, I don't know. I, I kind of just decided, like, I, I really just want to try to be a nicer person in general. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I just going to make the to effort. That. I'm going to start making the effort, that kind of thing. Yeah. And I like working with people. And, you know, the thing that I like the, the best for me, the thing that's the most rewarding is just uh, setting people up for success and hoping to be a part of their success and, and that. So, like, Huge. it's very gratifying to see you guys successful and 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 keeping going and seeing the roadmap to how it's going to become even more and more that at the end of the day feels almost better than when something happens to you specifically it's uh, it's a neat uh it's a great thing to see it's very inspiring i think it's fantastic but i think your perspective is what makes that fantastic all the words are nice and everything but the fact that you've put them all into a thing and then been like oh it's you all right I'll i'm glad it. that you're here Okay. On a day where we have to talk about this. Do you know what this is? <laughs> that this is a calendar. Yep. Correct? Yep. Yes. I can't spell calendar. I always <laughs> spell it. Dave Watch. Okay. Mrs. Ryan, today <laughs> is, what is today? 15th, right? Yes. Right, today is October 15th. I'm putting an X denoting that David Letterman is not sitting in that chair no, because Alex not. Bloom is. Correct. Mrs. Ryan, let's see. Uh, for anyone else who didn't see the show last week... A little bit of announcement on the Dave Watch. Oh, shit. I forgot to push the button. Hang on, Mrs. Ryan, while I go look for the calendar. (laughs) Holy crap. Okay, now that that's done, thank goodness. Do you know that we're trying to get Dave as a guest on the show? Yes, I do. And do you know that we've made a lot of progress? I I have been, as I've been keeping track of the show, I know. So... (laughs) You've always got yourself in a, you've never painted in a corner. Did you paint yourself in a corner once really badly? And like, I'm never going to do that again ever for the rest of my life. Uh, I actually have literally painted myself in a corner. I don't know about uh, All right. Well, we have been trying to get uh, to Dave's people and the whole thing. And then we finally got to, he's got one guy and, and, and the guy is really hard to get to. And then when you do, he's hard to get a response from blah, blah, blah. We got to the guy. Mrs. Ryan had a long conversation with the guy. We've gotten through the guy. The guy said, I love it. I thought this was not true. Uh, I've been telling other people this was a lie. (laughs) You haven't come to me yet, blah, blah, blah. Um, Can't make any guarantees for what Dave will say, but he did agree to take it to Dave. So at this point, we're thinking that we haven't heard because David Letterman has has had a very big weekend watching our shows, of course. Yeah, yeah. There is no other explanation for why we haven't had a – So (laughs) the (laughs) X denotes that David Letterman is not sitting here today. (laughs) No. But we're going to check in each and every day, and the progress is being made. I it's going to happen. I don't, I don't see a world where it's now up to David Letterman, who is aware of us, knows this whole story, the whole thing, remembers. Right. And then is just like, 
No, it's going to happen. <laughs> Not interesting. It's going to happen. You also, I mean, you're calling it Dave Watch. Think of all the other Daves you could potentially get. Oh, that's the exciting just, part. Yeah, just any Dave, and then you've accomplished part of Dave Watch. You know? Like, I, there's a guy who... Uh, We're focusing in a little bit on the yeah. specific Dave, I think, for this one. the dry cleaning place I go to. His name is Dave, and I'm sure he'd be happy to come Is he on, interesting? Tell you how to get out stains. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's not not interesting. You didn't know this story until you were here last, right? Correct. Is that when I told you for the first yeah, time? It, yes. Yeah. So, and then I told you here that day, mm -hmm. and then did you see the, did you go watch the episode where I told the story, or you saw no, that too? No, you didn't, well, actually, you didn't tell me on, oh, you're saying There's an episode where yeah, I yeah, told Yes, the, yes, 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 yes. Um, does any of that make the kid from Wilton make more sense? Knowing that that was going on concurrently, that I had that big secret going on. And oh, all that you stuff. as a kid from? I thought you just were talking. Okay, um, yeah, it does. I mean, it's weird, right? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's the it's, bookend. It's um, I was just telling someone this the other day. It's like we all love the stories that end the way they also begin, with a little bit of that. Excuse me. Uh, call it uh, sippy cup syntax. Right. Like you drink from a sippy cup when you're a baby, you drink from a sippy cup at the end, at the end. And everything in between is what happens. Yeah. And it's very Proper rewarding bookends. when when the thing that happens at the end is connected to the thing that happens at the beginning. For So for this part of your life. Yeah. And that's how I know it's going to happen, too, yeah. because it's, it's meant too to good be. not to. Right? right. Exactly. Like You don't write this story this far and get to this page and be like. And the end. No, no, you gotta keep going. And the thought that David Letterman's gonna be sitting in my butt groove uh, is just, I mean, that for me has been my dream. Do you remember growing up in Wilton and seeing him around town all the time? I used to see him in, in the, the market. The village a market. Lot. Yeah, and I, uh, uh, yes, that. And Paul Newman, you were talking about Paul Newman. All he the actually time. lived close to where I lived. You were on the other side of town, yeah, the south part of town. By, we lived right by Weston, and so did he. Yep. And him right I used border. to see a lot. And Keith Richards. Keith Richards all the time, yes. too, yeah. In in uh, Weston Liquor. It Really? Yeah. We would see him on 57 or whatever that road was all the time, coming in and out of his, where he was. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's so yeah. funny. Yeah, it was. Um, Amazing the amount of celebrities uh, uh, just in that geographical area. Well, Charles yeah, Grodin and, was in our town. Yeah, well, he also lived really close to me. Well, the same area. There. Yeah, yeah. Joey Pants from The Sopranos and Goonies and everything else. Right, yes. Um, and actually, it kind of, um, and then being from New York before, we would see famous people. Actually, kind of, I'm, I'm sure maybe for you. I just said I'm sure maybe, but I'm I'm sure for you it also helped when you then you get into the entertainment industry, you're a little bit more used to seeing famous people. I never got starstruck. It, it does, yeah, me neither. Yeah, yeah. I mean, except yeah. for like a particular, there are particular people who I just admire so much. Be, beyond, it doesn't matter that they're famous. The only reason I know about them is because they're famous. Their work or whatever. Right. Yeah. Yes. But yeah, I mean, you know, I I. I have been around, uh, you know, the talk shows and all the stuff. And then it's kind of cool. You don't get so starstruck. And then you realize everyone's just a real person. Mm -hmm. And that helps. Yeah. The great equalizer. Yeah. Yes. It's amazing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, what have we not gotten to? Is there anything I have not? We talked about Daddy Issues. It's on Netflix. That's exciting. It's a yeah. big deal. Everyone should go watch it and make sure you thumbs up liked it. Mm -hmm. uh, there's no way to – can you rate – you, there's no like star system on Netflix. It's just the thumbs up or thumbs down, right? Yeah, yeah I think so. But there's you know, no star system anymore. It's just thumbs okay. up or thumbs. Yeah, down. you right. can you can write if you're so inclined. You can write a review on uh, Rotten Tomatoes. That would be cool. Yeah, highly this recommend. Would be great, and or uh, an IMDb or um, uh, uh, Amazon, iTunes, any of those places where it's also available. If if you don't Reviews have Netflix, help you, yeah. Sure. Yeah. Um, right. yeah, they do. They do actually. They're all interact. Even um, bad ones, they say, just because it's all. Uh, what do they call it? Well, engagements or whatever. Yeah, and yeah, engagements exactly. And um, you also, honestly, uh, review. Well, reviews from critics is interesting, and uh, uh, it's a kind of just a cool experience to be like, I can't believe. Uh, so and so critic said. is watching this, yeah. like, but reviews from 
uh, people, audience members are, you know, they're wonderful. It's wonderful to have someone be so inclined, whether it's good or bad, it moved them enough to write something. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, think about all the things that we see where we just kind of go past them. Indifferent. But you actually kind of, especially um, for me as a writer, you can learn from them. You know, uh, things that people point out, good or if bad. If you stay objective and you're not going to get butt hurt by what they're saying. Well, the butt hurt, I mean, who, it's it's out. Like, one, it doesn't matter. But, <laughs> but yeah, you can learn from the next one. Oh, good for you. Because it's, yeah, you're not going to change the product now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's a great attitude. It is a great attitude. It, it's, it has been fun, and it's good lessons. The 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 A lot of the thing for your first anything, your first talk show, your first feature, your first day at your first job the best part of it ends up being all the lessons that you learned and then can apply to whatever the next thing is yeah and then Take you learn you. from there and keep going that's kind of uh that actually to go back to your question earlier is the most gratifying and rewarding part to know that okay if and when i do another movie i know that certain things I won't do again and certain things I will. And that has been really kind of the, the best thing. That's awesome. Actually, now that I think about it, yeah. Applying the experience. Yeah. In, yeah. In productive yeah. ways. Yeah. Yes. Uh, it's time to do billboard. <laughs> okay. This is the part of the show where you can, uh, basically plug your social media or anything you've got coming up. Obviously the movie on Netflix, but this is your camera. Go. <laughs> Which is my camera. So you want to watch daddy issues on Netflix, iTunes, Amazon, uh, Google Play, Fandango Now, any of those places on demand. I also talked about uh, drinking stories, which will be at the Sassafras Saloon on Vine Street coming up on the 29th. And um, you can visit u1rproductions.com to see what's going on at Under One Roof Productions, see some of our work. We're a full service production company and marketing company. And you can also check out alexbloom.net to see some of my work there, kind of see what I'm about. Um, and always enjoy writing and producing for for anything. Awesome. Yay. Yeah. Good job, buddy. Thank you. You got a lot of stuff there. Well, I do have two websites, so yes. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. 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 I just mean you've got a lot of stuff. You're always working on stuff. You've got a yeah. lot of stuff. Yes, a lot of stuff. People yeah. always ask us, what are you up to? Eh, the show's great. Show's great. Just trucking along doing the show. Because it's so much work to yeah. keep this moving and then also increase and grow. I'm sure. Yeah. And 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 to see how far it's come since uh last July is, so good. is really good. Back cool. on it. Yeah, no. Yeah. You're so impressive. Uh is there anything that we could partner with on your company? Because you're if you're a production company, I mean, we're we we're going to the PEC in a couple of weeks and mm-hmm. there's all sorts of opportunity there. Yeah, I would love to explore right, let's talk that. about that stuff yeah, off, the, I mean, off the off the Yeah, you should you show. you can see I mean we're really we're we're an indie company. We we know how to, you know, get things done and we have a very scrappy attitude, but we also have a lot of imagination. Yeah. And something that um I like to say is um you know, passion costs nothing, but it's worth everything. We have a lot of passion, we have a lot of imagination and that I think is really what can separate us. I love it. Um, under yeah. one roof. Uh, yes, exactly. All things. I love that motto. Full 360. Mm-hmm. Uh, how do you feel? I feel great. Um, if you are going to show the the trailer, mm-hmm. uh, that would be awesome. It's um, uh, will have played before you got in here. Oh, cool. Wasn't that awesome? Sorry. <laughs> oh, it was so good. <laughs> Sorry. Well, I think that, yeah, whatever. Yeah. They'll have seen it already yes, by, by this point. Yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> if you have nothing else then, Mrs. Ryan, what do we have tomorrow? <laughs> Richard's here tomorrow. Tomorrow? Oh, that's right. It's Friends Week. Friends Week. That's right. Richard Chasler's here. He is our comedy booker who is also a very good stand-up comedian. And that's so awesome. he, he comes in every six months or so. Great. Just books himself. All right. There uh, you go. Uh, because we want him to. Yeah. Yeah, he's really enjoyable. Do you have any Daves that are friends? Because that could help with the Dave watch. We're only looking for one specific Dave. Just it one needs Dave. to be one specific Dave. We don't need a plethora. Dave. Yeah. We're Just good. one Dave. I'm Just sick of dicking around. Down, Alex. Maybe you don't <laughs> notice it. Maybe you can't get the tone in my. The guy is ready to have the conversation with the real Dave. Come on, Dave. Let's do it. <laughs> uh, Richard Chasler tomorrow, and then Thursday, race car driver Ron Goodman will be yeah. here all the way from Australia. So that's pretty exciting as well. Yeah. Uh, I know. I know. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, that's it, Mrs. Ryan. I love you so very much, Alex Bloom. So nice to see you. We love you so very much. I love you both too. Thank you for having me. We love everybody at home. Please love one another, and we will see you tomorrow with Richard Chasler.
<laughs> Are you worried? No, I just want to make sure you. I don't know. You, I just get show. through these things. I just get through them. <laughs> okay. I'm looking for what is it? What Carson said, "I got to do an hour a night." I'm looking for warm bodies. Right. <laughs>